All right, I have uh, started the recording and we'll go ahead and get moving uh, here at the top of the hour with our session today using the new Galileo Bento search. I'm Russell Palmer and I'm the Assistant Director for Galileo Support Services and uh, I live and work here in the Athens area at the ITS building at the Board of Regents. And uh, we have uh, really been working hard this year to uh, continue our redesign of Galileo and our improvement of Galileo. And this was a big next step for us to create a better means for users to access search results in our main Galileo search area. And we'll focus in on that today. I'll probably mention a few other things just generally about search. Uh, also, uh, we made a few improvements to our database search that I will point to as we go through today. We've added some interesting things and features there, uh, but uh, just want to primarily focus in on this new tool specifically. Uh, and uh, just logistically speaking here today, uh, you see that I have some PowerPoint slides. I will mostly be doing live demo and my PowerPoint slides are there in case uh, all of the Galileo servers explode or the power goes out or something horrible, uh, we will still be able to cover the content and I'll make sure those slides are, I think, a good reference point for you all. I'll make sure that you all get the slides and also a link to the recording. It usually takes a couple of hours for that recording to process, so I will make sure that you all get that recording in an email uh, probably tomorrow morning as I start the day. Uh, along with the slides. We also maintain a Galileo LibGuide uh, for training uh, and training materials, and I'll put the link for that uh, in the um, uh, email that I sent tomorrow so that you can see any forthcoming training, any vendor-based training, and also access. We've uh, added new and improved Galileo video tutorials this year, and I'll, um, I'll point to those as we go through as well because we have several tutorials uh, related to the Bento search that I want you to be able to see, including a video tutorial. So just know that anything we talk about today, you'll be getting uh, materials and backup uh, stuff um, tomorrow uh, once I get that all processed and sent out to you. So just because we have 30 minutes, I want to go ahead and leap in. But before I do, I just want to reiterate that we have turned off microphones uh, and have limited conversation to the chat. So please, uh, as I go through material today, feel free to use the chat to type questions and any comments that you have as we take a look at the bento search. Do note, I usually have a helper. Mike, I don't think you're here, uh, but uh, Mike and I trade turns of uh, reviewing each other's questions in chat because it's really difficult to see in the uh, chat environment <laughs> when you're uh, actually doing a web demo. Uh, but uh, just know that I can't see that and either Mike will be here to read your questions to me at an appropriate time. And I'll also be making sure that we pause uh, to, to ans address any questions and I can come back into the chat if I need to, if uh, Mike isn't here. So just know that we will be uh, uh, addressing your questions from the chat as soon as we see them. Uh, so without further ado, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today. Uh, so the Galileo Bento search, the, the, the idea came from uh, some libraries that had done this previously. The whole Bento idea is tied very closely to the idea of the Japanese, Japanese Bento box, uh, the J Bento lunch box, which is compartmentalized. It's divided into uh, concrete uh, boxes so that individual items don't touch each other. Uh, so we have applied basically that same concept to the Galileo search uh, where we are sorting search results into appropriate boxes by material type basically. Now we couldn't put a box for every single material type that is out there so we did some logical mappings for those so that they would make sense for our users and wouldn't overwhelm our users. But we will continue to work on and, and be flexible with the, the boxes and the box content and the box mapping as we go through. And I will show you in our tutorials uh, 
in our FAQs where you can find the what's mapped to each box uh, as we go through uh, uh, our uh, different materials today. Do note that we have approached the Gallia Bento search as a beta release. We are not replacing the search that is there now that people rely on, nor will we ever replace that search completely. Our goal is to continue to improve the Bento search to the point that we can release it as the full main Galileo search on the main Galileo page. Uh, so that is our goal. And we're about two thirds of the way there. We have some improvements to make that I will talk about uh, at the end of uh, today's session, but uh, we are we are moving much more quickly than we anticipated. We did a lot of great work this year, uh, but still felt more comfortable releasing this as a beta that uh, users could toggle on and off instead of fully replacing that main search uh, right out of the gate this year. And our goal is to go ahead and integrate that full replacement in December or perhaps January. So we did a beta release uh, on July 19th. I imagine that some of you have had an opportunity to play with the Bento search already. Um, as I mentioned, improvements on the Bento search will continue through the fall. And our goal is to make it that default in the Galilee of portal by January and continue even after that to provide iterative uh, or consistent improvements. One of the improvements that we're looking toward uh, as soon as possible is creating the ability. Once you see the search and we, we're talking through it and demo it, you'll see there are a fair number of bento boxes. We want to perhaps give more institutional control of what goes in those boxes uh, in terms of what shows and displays on your screen at your library uh, for Galileo in that regard. And that would probably be managed by our Galileo admin uh, module. So uh, then uh, the other piece of this, and I really look forward to hearing from you all perhaps today or after today, after you've had an opportunity to really dig in and use the Bento search, let us know what you think. Let us know how we can improve it. We have our Galileo Development Advisory Committee, and they're really great uh, uh, public library representatives on that that are very involved with the development process. Uh, so we get feedback that way from our public libraries, but then also don't hesitate to submit a support request. If you see something that's bothering you or something that we can improve, something that can be better, something that you just like to be a part of the Bento search, do let us know and we will take that to heart and do our best to, uh, to integrate uh, all the best improvements that people suggest. So I'm going to, oh, thanks, Mike. Mike is here now. So that's great because I'm just about to go to live demo and uh, I will close out <laughs> my Gabinet slides uh, here and then go uh, over into uh, the live demo here in just a second. The first thing that we wanted to do, uh, and that's why we chose the bright yellow, one of the reasons why we chose the bright yellow button, we wanted people to see this, we wanted to draw attention to this, and we wanted to make it easy for users to turn it on and turn it off. So the Bento toggle is there uh, right in the middle of the screen, right under the standard uh, EBSCO search, this discover search, uh, and users can turn it on and off as they like. So let's go ahead. I'm going to stop with my slide presentation and go on out to my browser at this point so that we can go ahead and uh, see what this all is all about. So uh, Mike, if you'd let me know when Galileo shows up, I can see it. Yay. Hello, Galileo. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I just always use because I am an Athens Clark County Library user. I just always log in as Athens Clark County Library. So I have logged in to uh, Galileo now and uh, you see the Bento search box is right there in the middle of the screen. We did uh, our best to define a Bento right there on the screen. Um, we are also making sure that we do as mobile friendly as possible of the design. So this will work both if you hover it and if you click it. So uh, a tap in the mobile environment will engage this uh, little pop out window uh, so a user can read about what the Bento box search does. And I can turn it on here. I'll go ahead and without further ado, click it to on, and you'll notice that the screen changed a little bit. In the long term, we plan to 
move some things around to make the page more navigable and easier to use. Uh, so this is also not only a preview of the Bento search, but a preview of what the Galileo site will look like. I'm going to turn the Bento back off just for a second, just to show you it's very easy to toggle it on and off. But if I go down the page, I'll see that the databases by subject, databases by type area are here. This Galileo database search, you know, we've, we've gotten lots of feedback that this is confusing to have a search in two different places that does two different things. Um, and then the spotlight area. So what you'll see happen is when you engage the Bento search, the databases by subject and type go away. And then the first thing you see is in the spotlight. And while we have the links right here at the top on the page all the time, uh, sort of redundantly, the all databases search, the all journal search, and the in the spotlight uh, anchor link all live at the top and will continue to live at the top, but will eventually go away from the middle of the screen. So the all databases, uh, a lot of people have said, um, we never want this all databases browse and this all databases search to go away. We have no intention to do that, but we have integrated the database search into Bento. So for example, one of the things that we heard commonly from our libraries uh, over and over again is, oh, my users will just come in. They don't, it's so, there's so much stuff in Galileo. They don't know where to look. They just come in and they'll go to this, the, the main search on the main page and they'll type in Mango. Uh, because they want to find the Mango database and they want to use that for language learning. Well, we've already made small steps to solve that particular issue with placards, but we have now integrated the database search into the Discover search with Bento. So if I go ahead and click search here for Mango, you'll see that it brings up the database list. So uh, Mango Languages, and now I can just click out and go straight to Mango. And just to compare that with how it works now, I'm going to turn the Bento off and search Mango. I mean, it works now because we have integrated uh, a placard specifically for the Mango database, but certainly not for every database that a user might look for. We have a placard. This is the, what's called a placard that provides that direct link to Mango languages when someone searches for Mango. Uh, but we, we, it's a lot of work to do that for every single database and could cause a lot of confusion. So we've only done it for select databases. So by doing this in the Bento search, by converting that Bento search to search the databases, we will save the user uh, and our librarians ultimately a lot of time when it comes to searching for an individual database by name. Another common one that came up was Learning Express. Um, I want to be able to come in and find Learning Express quickly and easily and notice that it even corrected for my putting a space in the spelling. So I've now found the Learning Express library quickly and easily uh, there in the Bento search. Okay. So with the Bento search on, I'm just going to play around and do a, full, a few sample searches now, but point to a couple more things. We did uh, decide to Put the full text only limit here on the main page and that's something that we'll do with all searching on the main page in the future whether it be the bento or the um the regular uh, galileo search but you can limit the full text on the fly just by clicking that button and we of course want users to always be able to get to that standard galileo search ebsco discovery service advanced search if they want to so this button will always be here to go out to the advanced search. So you can put in multiple search terms, apply multiple limiters right out of the gate uh, in uh, Galileo search. So none of that is just to be fully clear. None of that is ever going away. We're just going to provide a better means and a more efficient means to search on the front end um, in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead. I have a couple of sample searches that I made for myself. This was a fun one from the other day, and I'll show you a flaw in the Bento box system right now. So someone might come in and look for a nursing exam, and I have to give great uh, credit to Beth McIntyre, who was playing around with this after she attended a training session the other day and discovered this. This was really interesting that Beth caught this. Yeah, it found the database, the Learning Express library, but because of a configuration issue that we've already repaired and we'll be pushing that fix to the production side of Galileo soon, 
What should logically nursing exam produce results in Learning Express, Express right now is not in the Bento search. So we will be repairing that very soon. So just note that that will change and will be a massive improvement. And uh, but we are, are also thrilled that we are able to provide a Learning Express box. So if I go in here and do a search for uh, SAT prep, for example, now I will say that what this has to do is a little bit different than the standard discovery search and that it has to go out to a different source and pull all that information back and then sort it uh, behind the scenes. So it takes a little bit longer sometimes, but it, it, we've definitely improved the speed of it and we'll continue to do that as much as we can. Actually this, the, yeah, we got to apply that Learning Express um, uh, fix, it looks like, uh, Mike because I didn't get any, um, let me just try just going a little bit further back and just saying SAT. We'll get that fixed fairly soon. Just wanted to point that out that it is something that we're aware of. Yeah, see if I just do SAT and don't put a second term in, it finds those 71 items in Learning Express. Um, so I'm gonna do just a couple of more sample searches to show you that you can uh, play around with this in uh, different ways. I have another window over here. So I did SAT prep and nursing exam. So my next search, you know, I want to make sure that you see that it surfaces those primary documents, those things that you see in um, Digital Library of Georgia. The Digital Library of Georgia is indexed in the main Galileo search. We will improve that ultimately, but right now it is definitely in that indexed there. So note that I get Georgia and World War II. I get results like in, from the encyclopedia from Funk and Wagnalls, which is an encyclopedia that everyone has access to. I get an article on World War II, an article on Athens, Georgia, an article on Dean Rusk. I get primary sources probably from the uh, New Georgia Encyclopedia and the Georgia, um, the uh, Digital Library of Georgia, World War II veteran William Alexander Scott um, an exhibition. And this World War II in Georgia is most likely an article from the New Georgia Encyclopedia in this case. Yeah, it's going to take me out to that um, article uh, description there. So um, we'll dig into navigating results in just a few minutes, but you see uh, just again uh, that that search was pretty successful in sorting the types of content that I'll get uh, into uh, the material by type. Also, in this case, it's done a really nice job of providing some databases where I might find more information. So uh, pretty cool with that. A couple more sample searches just to show you that it is just as powerful as the other uh, search tools that you use. If I am looking for a known title, so I'm going to play with an ebook title, Genealogy Online for Dummies. Um, if I want to find that book, I can go into the uh, Bento search and it should have no problem finding. Now it is finding other things, but notice that in the ebooks, which is taking a second to come up, the very first ebook hit here is Genealogy Online for Dummies. Now, I, uh, the first sort of navigational thing to show you is I've been scrolling to get to results, but I don't have to. One of the reasons this is all so wide is because we wanted to include, whenever it was available, the abstract information for the article here in the context of the search results. And also we needed to have room for full text buttons and information. So we wanted to make sure that we could get enough information to help the user evaluate what they were looking at. So that's why it goes down the page a bit. And our web designer uh, and a development team had the good idea to put these buttons, which are called pill buttons, uh, into the top area. So, well, hey, if I'm here and I just want to see the ebooks that came up with that search, how do I do that? If I click on the ebooks button, the pill button here, it brings up those ebook search results for me right away. And I see that my genealogy uh, online for dummies is right there. And I can go ahead and access that. Uh, through the button. So we didn't want users to have to navigate down the page and that's how they can avoid it as they get the results presented up here. Uh, do note that uh, when we talk about moving down the page a bit that if I get to the end there are five entries for each category so I'm in the scholarly articles area this time but there's a show more results here where I can browse all the results without leaving Bento 
And the same is true if I click on the, the pill box. If I click on news, there are 25 news items here that I can take a look at. Again, it takes a minute to load that uh, I can navigate. I can continue moving forward. I got the first 20 here on the main page, but to navigate, I just simply go to next and it will take me to that last five results uh, within the search results. I go back to my previous here very easily. So we've made it so that all of the navigation with the Bento is self-contained. You don't have to worry about going out to another website unless you want to, but there is a delay on that. So one of the questions that we got asked and one of the things that we thought about very early on in this process was I'm not fully satisfied with what I'm seeing in my results and I want to go into the search that I'm used to using. We are going to provide that functionality. So I'll go ahead and click on the primary sources button here and pretend I didn't get a, a great result and I want to go out into the EBSCO discovery service. I want to continue my limit to primary sources, but I want to I want to get out of here and, and apply some of those limiters and maybe widen out my search or change up my words or uh, other things. We have a refined search option that will be reinstalled hopefully soon. We're working to solve a small problem that was created when we deployed that to Galileo production, but there will be a refined search button here that will open the search in the standard uh, EBSCO discover search slash Galileo search uh, where you can apply those limits, apply more keywords, whatever you like to do, uh, and that is forthcoming. You'll notice when you look at the help screens in the videos that, that feature is already included, uh, but we will be adding it back uh, in short order. So I apologize for the delay on that particular feature. So that is uh, again navigating with the pillbox views uh, and the, a little bit of explanation of what's um, uh, how to get back and forth on the page with a few searches there. Uh, how deep and how sophisticated can we search? You can search for anything in 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 the uh, Bento search that you would search for in the standard uh, Galileo uh, Discover search. One example that came up recently was someone was asking. Can I search by a digital object identifier? And if you're not familiar with the DOI or digital object identifier, it's a way that some of our publishers out there identify specific articles uh, with a uh, an object, a digital object identifier. And yes, you can search for any uh, item that you can search for in the standard EBSCO Discover search. I'm going to use this DOI here, which is a, this is a digital object identifier for an article I co-wrote, and you'll see that it's only going to find that particular article, uh, but it finds it and finds it well. So pretty much any type of item that you look for in the, in the standard discover search, you can look for in the Bento search. Another question uh, that came, comes up pretty frequently, the Bento searches will be different in each of the views. The uh, elementary Bento search will, will uh, carry you to uh, age appropriate results in the elementary bento search. But for example, if I'm searching here, Georgia history, and say I'm in fifth grade, and I don't find as much on Georgia history as I might like as a fifth grader. I maybe want something a little bit more sophisticated than what I'm finding in the elementary school side. Well, hey, what happens if I just go ahead and go up here and click on middle school? It carries my search with me and changes the results to reflect what's in that middle school index set of resources. So it sets a, a cookie so that the um, uh, the setting of Bento remains on and it follows you from view to view with your search results intact. So that's uh, another uh, feature I'm glad that we added because that can really cut down on the uh, confusion there. So we're moving pretty quickly through things, and I think I've done uh, all my sample searches. We've got about six minutes left, and I'll make sure I cover everything. I uh, just wanted to, yeah, I want to make sure um, that I show you that the, I, I won't bother with my example again since we're running short of time, but uh, you can search for known articles. Like I have an article that's how to buy an appliance right now, and it found it with absolutely no problems in the Vento search. So uh, just a couple more things I want to share with you in terms of search generally. One of the things that had been asked for over uh, the last few years uh, that we've done is, is we've improved. We've made some improvements to our, I'm going to turn Bento off and just show you this, to our database search. 
um, people have asked, well, hey, how, can we make it easier to find articles uh, or databases that cover ESL that have material in other languages? So we added a keyword search so that you can do that. Another one is, can we provide? Can you provide a way to get us to resources that uh, where I can limit by Lexile? So if you search Lexile, you can do that. So that's just the databases that have Lexile. And then just another thing, if I go to more info on a search, and you can see now that we've enabled uh, the formats, the subjects, and the keywords to be clickable. Uh, this is new for Galileo to be able to do this. So if I was wanting to see other things by Lexile or Lexile level as I recorded it here, if I click, I can go back basically to that same search that I just did and see those six databases that let me limit in that way. So uh, we've again added some keywords there and uh, so um, to, to make it easier to find that, those categories of materials. So it's, it's been primarily a K-12 ask, but I think it benefits uh, all of us really. So uh, the last thing I want to share with you are just a couple of things uh, in uh, the Galileo support area. I um, went ahead and searched. If I go, you go to support and you can access uh, from the Galileo website, uh, if you click on the support area, you can access our support questions. And if I type in simply Bento here, you can get an overview of everything that I've covered today. What is the Galileo Bento uh, beta search? and it covers in detail pretty much everything that I've gone over. And then also, um, if you're curious what types of material are mapped to the bento boxes, there's a PDF document. And forgive me, I need to go back and pre this up. I was just trying to get something up quickly um, when we went live, but you can see which material types are mapped to specific boxes. And I won't linger on that again in the interest of time, but you'll, you'll see there that you can find that in the Galileo support area. Um, finally, uh, just wanted to come back and see what questions there might be about Bento. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing here, I think. Try to anyway. And Mike, are there questions? Uh, and if you have questions, we have about three minutes left for questions feedback, things that you see that you like about this, things that you see that you don't like about it. Love to hear from you on uh, your thoughts on Bento so far uh, with messages in the chat. And no questions right now, but I did want to mention that the uh, the bug with Learning Express where it showed no results, that fixes in staging, but not yet in production. Right. So that's, yeah. that, that's why that's, you didn't see it. Yep. No, I, I was expecting not to see it my, in my case. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, it, it's great now on the Galileo side, uh, on, the, on the creation side, we can put things into a, uh, what we call a staging area now before we actually move it out to Galileo. And it's made our lives so much better for testing and other things. So that's what we're referring to there. Mm -hmm. Questions, thoughts on Bento? And I would say do not hesitate to send us a question uh, later on after the fact that you have uh, that comes up uh, or as you're using it and uh, something is mysterious to you, let us know. We're more than happy uh, to help out. A question from Allison Robinson. Will there be other databases with their own Bento boxes like Learning Express in the future? That's a great question. Uh, it is possible. Uh, it. it so um, it's, I think it's a great way to drive people to those resources that get low use. Uh, again, what we really hope to be able to do in the future, Allison, is to uh, open up things more so that there can be some local control of things like that. But we're, we're going to have to do some work before we can. Um, so short answer, we don't have any immediate plans to, to do that, but we have plans as we build infrastructure to make it easier for you to do it. So short answer, yeah, we'll we'll get there. <laughs> um, we'll get there either by uh, responding to you and, and giving you what you want or need, uh, or we'll respond to you by letting creating a means for you to do it. Other questions? That's a good one. And Allison, if you have uh, suggestions on that for the short term, yeah, good, good. I'm glad that you like it, Allison, and uh, yeah, do uh, I'll I'll take note of that. That that's something that uh, 
particularly individual libraries are going to want. Um, you know, the more the more we uh, evolve the ability for individual institutions and libraries to customize, the better. I think with this, because everybody has unique users that have special, you know, unique ways they want to search, and and making this local is, is a good approach. But for now, <laughs> pardon our progress. Other questions or thoughts? Well, again, we're at the uh, half half hour, so I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to um, see what we've been working on with the Bento search uh, today. As I mentioned, I'll get those slides and uh, the recording of this out to you um, tomorrow, and I'll look forward to seeing you in another session soon. Thank you all so much. Have a great afternoon.